All righty. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good. We welcome you here. Welcome you all to the Clevers Oak Baptist Church. Uh, certainly good to be in the house of the Lord, wherever that may be. Be it your living room, your kitchen, your bedroom, wherever you may be this morning, we welcome you and we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So it's a beautiful day outside and it's an uh, awesome day to be in worship, in fellowship, and in the service of the Lord. For God is good. Uh, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. King David said, I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gate, O Jerusalem. Shall we listen now to praise God from whom all blessings flow? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. God, we thank you and we bless you. We praise your most holy and your high name. And it's because you're worthy to be praised, O oh God. We thank you for another day in the land of the living. We invoke your presence now and we say, have thine own way in this service. Let your anointing fall free, O oh God, fall fresh on us. Fresh oil, we need fresh oil in these last and evil days. So have thine own way, God, in Jesus' name, amen. Congregational hymn will be Lead Me, Guide Me. Let me find that. Through the 
there at Clever's Oak. Uh, at this time, we're going to move on in our program. We're going to ask, call on Sister Sharon Lee, who is going to read uh, God's word in our hearing on this morning. And also following the reading of God's word, we'll ask Deaconess B. Webster to lead us in a morning prayer. So at this time, uh, Sister Sharon Lee. Exodus chapter 7, verses 1 to 6. And it reads, And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth my armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the God, I am the Lord, when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded thee. So they say, I have read into your hearing Exodus chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. God's word is already blessed. Amen. Ms. Webster. Good morning, everyone. First, giving honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to Pastor Smiling, and to all of you, God's children. Let us go to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for yet another day, a day that you saw fit to open our eyes and let us see light once again. We thank you, Lord God, for last night's sleep, thanking you for keeping us and protecting us. Thanking you, Lord, that when we woke this morning, we were still realized that you are our God and you are our Savior. Yeah. We thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness of sins, asking that you cleanse us once again from the last time that we asked that you forgive us and remove all our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then, Lord, we pray and ask that you remember our sick, that you would send healing just as you did in the Bible days. The word says that as many as were brought to you, them you healed. So we ask, Lord, and we lift up all the sick among us yeah. that you would heal them according to your will. We also remember the bereaved families, Lord. We pray that you would comfort and keep them in your care. Send them peace, as your words say, that passes all understanding. Particularly right now, we're remembering the Lawson family. And then, Lord, we pray that you would bless and remember those that are in the jailhouse, keeping them safe from each other and safe from uh, any further 
misdeeds that they may may have. We pray, God, that you would regulate their mind, a change for the better, that you might use them to your glory. And Lord, we pray that you would bless and keep the protesters all over the land, yeah. those who are out there calling out and crying out for good. We pray that you would just put a hedge of protection around them, that um, they may see this thing through and see a change. And Lord, we pray that you would change the mind of those who are only out for destruction, that you would uh, give them a new insight, that they might see the, uh, the wrong in their deeds and do something for the good instead of evil. And Lord, we pray for the our leaders, the president, mm. the legislators, Lord, we pray that you would uh, be their guide, be their mind, Lord, that they might do for the good of the people and the good of the land. And Lord, we pray for firemen, for policemen, for the emergency care workers, for the doctors, the nurses, the CNAs, that you would continue to protect and keep them and strengthen them that they might do um, what they're called to do. And Lord, we pray for um, our house. We pray for the Clever's Oak Baptist Church, that you would continue to bless our pastor, continue to anoint him, that he might continue to uh, find a way to keep the word flowing, to keep the word getting out to so many, not only the members of Clever's Oak, but family and friends all over the land. We pray for his family, Lord, our first family at Clever's Oak Baptist Church, that you might continue to bless and keep them in your care. And Lord, we just pray for every member that you would keep and bless them, keep and bless their family members, praying that they are beacon light unto anyone who decides they're not coming to church. We pray, God, that you would just use us all to your glory. Bless our children, keep them and guide them, Lord, protect them along the way. And Lord, we just pray that you would use us all, not for our good, not for our agenda, but use us all to your glory. All of these things, Jesus, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We thank Deaconess Webster for the fervent prayer. We thank Sister Sharon Lee for the reading of the scriptures. And as we move on here, let me do a selection. And this selection was, was recorded and sung by the person you just heard praying. Uh, Deaconess B. Webster. So uh, let me cue up this song. And uh, it is I Go to the Rock. I Go to the Rock. Where do I go? Where's no one else to turn to? Who do I talk to? When nobody wants to listen, who do I lean on? When there's no foundation stable, I go to the rock. I know he's able to go to the rock. Where do I go? When the storms of life are threatening, who do I turn to? When the winds of sorrow blow, is there a refuge? In the time of tribulation, I go to the rock. I know he's able to go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. Go to the song of the Lord. I run to the mountain and the mountains. Stands by me when the earth all around me is against it. On Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. Go to the stone and the builders protected. Run to the mountain and the mountain. Stands by me when the earth around me is a good thing. Christ, 
the solid rock I stand when I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I can go to the rock. When I need a shelter, I go to the rock. When I need a refuge, I go to the rock. In the time of storm, yeah, I go, I go. Amen, amen. I go to the rock. Amen. That was our very own Deaconess B. Webster who brought forth that beautiful rendition of I go to the rock. Amen. At this time, we're going to move on here. I'm so glad to have you. Lord have mercy. All of our uh, YouTube and our Facebook and also our telephone conference line. We're just so glad, so Jesus joy, have so much Jesus joy over the fact that you have come to be with us on this morning for God is still, he's still an awesome God. Let us move on now to our tithes and our offerings. Uh, we are so glad and uh, so uh, uh, happy that you have decided to uh, come by on yesterday and drop off of your tithes and your offerings. And certainly we know that God will bless you. He does the blessing. He said he will open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing that ye shall not have room enough to receive. We want to thank you in advance to our online givers, as well as those that drove by, as well as those that use letter and stamp. But well, we're going to call on our, our uh, young deacon in training, Deacon Alfonso Webster Jr. Uh, he's also a trustee of the church, but he's going to come and... Uh, he is going to pray over, I have a report of our offering on yesterday and from our treasurer. And so he's going to come now and uh, lead us to the uh, phone. He's going to pray over the offering. Uh, we'll give you over to Deacon Alfonso Webster Jr. Good morning, church. Let's all close eyes and bow our heads. Father, we come to you humble you know how just to say thank you. Thank you for our sleep and summer last night and bring us up bright and early this morning. Thank you again, Lord, for us able to get together one more time. Though the church is not open, but we can still get together and worship and praise you. Pray that you take this offering and you use it for the advancement of your kingdom. This is a prayer saying, daughter, son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to play. A little bit of a offertory chant. Uh, Thank Deacon Alfonso Webster for the offertory prayer. I want to thank all of our online uh, Deaconess uh, Webster, uh, 
and Deacon Webster, and I think Sister Sharon have, have departed already, but we thank her also for uh, being a part of our, of our service this morning and helping with our uh, order of service. So as just a few brief remarks for you this morning here, let me just say that keep your eye open for the 7th of July. We talked about it on Wednesday a little bit about an economical type boycott uh, in, in response to the police brutality and the treatment of the African-American uh, throughout this country. Uh, we want to model after the Montgomery bus boycott where uh, we want our voice to be heard and we want to we want to shout loud by uh, financially boycotting and we ask that you prepare yourself for five days of, of none of not purchasing anything uh, starting on the 7th of July. Uh, my this was birth in a group that I attend they're called Pastors United in Battle and we have vowed to share with our congregations that we want to be heard. So we're going to, uh, we know that we get a better result when we hit the back pocket. And so uh, we're going to stand in unison with them and we're going to uh, put an economical squeeze uh, on those that, that seem to not hear our voice and we need, uh, we need social justice for all, especially those of color, those of, of the lesser uh, uh, minority. Um, we want social justice for all. We want to send out a, a heavy message for those five days. We want them to know, those that, the powers that be, to know that we mean business, and uh, we've discovered and we know by fact that we are some of the, uh, uh, we spend more than, than anyone else in this country, but we're treated the worst. So uh, on the 7th of July. Okay, this Saturday uh, coming, we ask that you pick up your communion kit if you have not done so already. Uh, we want to have our communion service all together on second or next Sunday. Uh, we ask that you come prepared. You be have your juice and your 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 bread or your wafer or your communion kit, and uh, we'll have communion together. Uh, and you want to come next week because we got an awesome guest uh, preacher that's going to be with us. And uh, now you're probably saying, "Who is it?" Well, I'm going to invite you to come on in bright and early next Sunday and check out this preacher, because this preacher can bring the word of the Lord. So, so get yourself ready for, for next Sunday. We got a guest coming in, and this guest is going to bring it on. I know I know that's right. I know that's right. Com continue to pray for the Bundy, the Webster, the Mudd family. Uh, we, uh, that family wishes to thank you all for your prayers and your kind words, and uh, your expressions of love at the loss of their brother, Brother Sugar Ray. So continue to lift them up and pray for them as they grieve during this uh, time of, of loss. Uh, as we always say, we don't take it for light. We don't take it for granted uh, that you've come by. You've taken of your time every Saturday. Some of you have been diligent from the, the onset, from the very beginning. You've been bringing of your tithes and your offerings. We thank you dropping them off drive by and for uh, doing the online giving as well. And if you don't know how to do that, just uh, call myself, text me, uh, talk to one of the officers. Uh, there's a, it's, it's not that difficult to do. It's an easy way of giving uh, without having to uh, get in your automobile and drive. Or if you choose not to put it in the, in, in the mailbox, just uh, go on to our website, www.cleversoak.org, and uh, there'll be a clear instruction as to how to do that. There's a button that's up front that says online giving. All righty. Also, we want to, would like to reach out to all of you that you would let us know if there's any need, any sickness in, in and throughout the community. 
and especially those who are members of the church and family of members of the church, I, I ask that you pray a special prayer for Lindbergh Do uh, Dozier. Uh, he's hospitalized in Columbia, South Carolina. He is my uncle. And uh, just keep him lifted in your prayers that he would uh, recover, that he would be made whole. Again, that's uh, Lindbergh Dozier. Don't forget to send, she might be looking right now, but first lady got another. She turned 29 all over again to tomorrow, the 8th of June, the first lady. Ain't that something? 29, I tell you, Lord have mercy. She wish her a happy birthday, text her, or say something to her, uh, give her a call, let her know uh, that uh, you wishing her a happy, happy birthday. We had a little piece of cake for her yesterday and a little preliminary type thing, a little uh, Zoom online with all of the children. But but let her know, let her know. If you if uh, you want to bless her, you can do that. Uh, if you just want to say happy birthday, just say something to her. She That's your first lady. Amen. Pray for peace, justice for all. Pray for our leaders. And don't forget, brothers, that this is my last little piece, and I'm going to come back with a song. Don't forget to wear your, your face covering. That that virus, that coronavirus, I think we're in the in the mindset that it it went somewhere, but uh, it's still very valid out there. The numbers are beginning to slowly rise again. Uh, those that are positive with this uh, COVID nineteen, so continue to wear your face covering. T don't take anything for granted. Keep, keep your keep your gloves and your face coverings and your your sanitizers and your hand washing and your social distancing. Continue to respect this thing because from all of those that I know that have it or had it is telling me they would not wish this on nobody, not even their worst enemy. So they're saying this thing is real. And I know people close to me that have been positive and the Lord has blessed them to come through, but not everybody make it. So be careful. Be safe. Don't take this thing for granted. Hey Amen. I'm done. Let me let me say let me go ahead and play now a sermonic song. And then we'll come back with the word message. Uh, let me do a sermonic song here. Uh, one that I've done before. I'm going to try to play it again here. All righty. Uh, let me cue this song in. Truly God is good And truly he's worthy to be praised I don't know about you but we come to have church today I feel alright Y'all feel alright choir? I don't know about you but I want to make it in Would it be alright if I just say this, listen Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Listen.
some sinner who's gone astray. You know what I do? I will, oh Lord, and yes, and ask the Lord for a little bit of more grace. I'm trying, I'm trying. If I just say one thing, quiet. Y'all listen to me. Listen. Lord, I don't bother nobody. I try to treat everybody the same. I get hard, church. That's that soon as I try to make a start for you, Jesus. Look what happened. My so called friends. all right in Jesus I'm looking for me a home if I can help my brothers and sisters I just leave them alone I'm trying I'm trying I'm trying so hard to make me <laughs> oh thank you Lord y'all come on help me sing why if I could say one word, I oh Lord, say a word. yes, to help someone along, along the way. If I could pray one prayer right now, church, oh Lord, and yes, to help some sinner. Let me say that again. Let me say, somebody might not hear. Let me say it. Listen. Lord, I don't bother nobody. I try to treat everybody the same. You see, everybody ain't the same, Lord. Just as soon as I try to make a start for you, Jesus. My so-called friends they all start talking about me but that's all right in Jesus I'm looking for me a home if I can help my brothers and sisters I just leave them alone I'm trying so hard yes I am I'm trying so hard Jesus to make it in Oh Lord, and y'all stay right there. I'm trying. I'm trying to make it in. I'm trying to walk right. I'm trying to treat my neighbor right. Talk about me just as much as you please. The more you talk, I'm gonna bend my knees. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying, I'm trying to make it in. I'm trying to make it in. Do you wanna go? Do you wanna go, church? I'm trying to make it in. Yes, I am. I'm gonna treat everybody right. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying try to make it. I'm trying to make it in. One more time, church. Hey, man, I'm trying to make it in. I'm trying to make it in. Hey, man, we thank God for uh, Deacon Willie Williams and the choir. Now, I, I can't, I don't always get it right on which choir it is, but I believe that was the combined choir 
of Clever's Oak Baptist Church. And if I didn't say the address yet, it's 13852 Silomon Road, Gold Vein, Virginia, 22720. All right, now let me invite your attention. We're so glad that you, you're with us this morning. It's a Sunday morning, and it's time now for the word of the Lord. And we're just so glad to be in his service on today. We're so glad to be in your presence and in, 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 in fellowship. Uh, we know we're not in the church, but uh, certainly we can continue to have church. And so we're going to invite your attention right now as we prepare uh, to go to the word of the Lord. We're going to invite you to Joshua, the book of Joshua. Chapter number six. And we're going to give you a second, a minute to find that place. That's Joshua. Uh, Joshua chapter six. And we'll, I'm going to pick up at the first verse of that, of that book. Joshua chapter number six. And I'll pick up at the very first verse. Uh, of that book. Again, one more time <clears throat> for those who are, <clears throat> who are turning the pages. Joshua chapter number six. It says, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus thou do, thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when, 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 when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of the rams of ram's horns uh, before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, pass on and compass the city and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horn passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priest that blew with the trumpets and the rearward, the rearward, came after the, the ark, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then shall ye shout. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about it once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp, and Joshua rose early. In the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord, and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord, before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them, but the rearward uh, came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day, they compassed the city once and returned into the camps. So they did six days. Verse 15 says, And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day, compassed the city about the same manner seven times 
Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that when they blew, when the priest blew with the, with the trumpet, Joshua said unto the people, shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. And I'm going to jump over to verse 20. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpet and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Amen. Thus ends the reading of the word. Thus they took the city. I want to use for a subject today, uh, the walls must come down. The walls must come down. The walls, the walls, the walls must come down. Brothers and my Holy Ghost sisters, it's it's awesome to be in your service, and it's uh, uh, awesome to be in the service of the Lord. And we know that God is an awesome God. He's awesome and powerful, and uh, absolutely all power is in his hands. There's no limitations to what God is able and what he can do. Uh, he has no boundaries. He has no ceiling, no, no, no borders, no limits, no, no limits, no restrictions. And his capabilities go beyond anything we can even fathom or imagine. He's able to do, according to scriptures, uh, exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or think, even when it comes down to walls. Now, everybody face walls from time to time. Can I get a witness? Yeah, even we uh, have walls, all of us. We even put up walls of our own on occasion. And look, our government, good God from Mount Zion, about a year ago shut down because of a wall. Y'all know what I'm talking about. See, see, walls are in place to keep wanted things in and unwanted things out. Sometimes walls are used to protect and keep unfriendlies on the outside. And on, on a personal level, if you want to shut somebody out, you put up a wall, and some people have walls you simply cannot penetrate, but not so with the Lord. Can I get a witness, church? See, walls will show up every now and again. Walls will come between you and your God. They'll come between uh, you and success, places that God wants you to go. Walls can be friendly, but they can also get in the way. Walls will come up, uh, but I want somebody to know today that all of these walls in our lives, they have got to, they must, they simply have to come down. I remember I remember being in China during the Beijing, Beijing Olympics. We had opportunity to go up on a section of the Great Wall of China. Now, this wall was purely defensive, and it was some 13 to 16 feet wide. Uh, and portions of the wall was as high as 46 feet in the air. And, and we walked on the top flats of this great wall. It was an awesome experience. But, but here in the text, we find another wall. We find another wall. The walls of Jericho, some 10 stories high and two tiers deep, a retainer wall and, and a huge inner wall. And so it is that, that after wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, Joshua and the people of Israel land on the east side of the Jordan River, opposite to the city of Jericho. Now Jericho was well fortified with a huge wall. And in order, in order my brothers and sisters, for God's people to get to the promised land, they had to overtake Jericho and conquer this city and all of its inhabitants. Before they could get to the next level, they had to conquer Jericho, but they had a huge problem. Walls around the city, the walls were, was the problem. It, 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 was a, it was a strong, fortified wall that surrounded Jericho. Many of us, many of us in here today, and many of us that's listening today, we, we have some kind of wall between us 
in our next level. Can I get a witness, church? Can I get a witness? Yeah, yeah, between us and where God wants us to go, there's a wall. And there's a wall. And all of these walls, whatever they might be, spiritual or physical or natural, they must come down. They must come down. You ought to tell somebody in your living room with you, tell them the walls must come down. They must come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God wants, God wants to take us to higher heights and new territories and new regions and new plateaus, if you will, in life. And but 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 we have these walls that gets all up in our way. He's ready to take us to a new level, but 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 the walls, the, the good God that's in our lives are, are all up in our pathway. We he wants to bless us, he wants to save us, he wants to increase us and move us to a better place. But but like Jericho, there are some tall and fortified walls that must come down before we can go to our next place. Yeah, yeah. Tell somebody the walls must come down. They, 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 that, that, that hard thing you can't seem to shake, that, that temptation you can't seem to overcome, that, that sin, good God, you keep committing, the, 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 these are all just like wall. The bad habits that you can't kick, the hatred that you harbor in your heart, the anger, the bitterness, the rage, the mean streak, the hot temperament, the, the foul tongue, the, 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 that lustful eye. Good God, and you, you can't get to the promised land. You can't get to your next level because it's just like a wall that's in your way. Because of all these huge walls that are standing straight up in our way, these walls, these walls have got to come down. And there's three things I'm going to talk about this text, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up on my horse and go to the next room. <laughs> Good God from Mom Zion. Three things. It's God's fight. It's a faith fight. And it's a loud fight. Those are the three points of emphasis. It's uh, God's fight. It's a faith fight. And it's a loud fight. Now, the first of all, Jericho was was in God's scope and sight. He he wanted it, it destroyed. He wanted it utterly destroyed because of a few things. They, they, they these people they dwelt in the land that was set aside for God's people. See, God sometimes want to get rid of things that's in your way. And 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 Jericho it set it was set right there in a land set aside for God's people. The people of Jericho were incredibly evil and wicked. Their, 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 their false gods and pseudo religions represented a temptation to Israel and could lead God's people to apostasy. So God wanted them to utterly destroy, utterly destroy. They had to go. They had to come. Good God, they had to be conquered. They had to be overtaken. And, and that's in line with God's word when he said, uh, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. And this, this wall thing in Jericho was, was God's fight, not Israel's fight. And, and the walls you deal with will, uh, are the same. Second Chronicles 20 and 15 says the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. Whatever wall issue you're dealing with, you, you've got to know that the fight is God's. The fight is not, the battle is not yours. And sometimes it's okay to remind God and let him know that this battle is yours, Lord. Sometimes it's all right to tell him, Lord, I'm going to sit and be still and see the salvation. Uh, this is your fight. Alcohol problems and drug addiction, you, you've got to let him know it's yours, Lord. Trouble, trial, and tribulation, sorrow, headache, grief, and anguish. It's the Lord's battle. It's not yours. The battle belongs to the Lord. Situation on your job, trial, and tribulation at the workplace, legal issues, Health issues, money problems, all of these are like as walls and the battle, good God, to bring them down is not yours. But if you turn it over, it becomes, y'all ain't going to pray with me. God said, I want to fight it if you give it to me. But it makes life easier when you realize that the battle, this is not your fight. This is God's fight. See, if you give it back to God, he'll work it out for you. He'll take, he'll take on that burden. Uh, he'll lighten that load if you give it to him and let him fight for you. He'll give you the victory. He'll 
make you to shine. He'll cause you to win and he'll give you success. He'll open doors that nobody, no man, no human, no, not anything. He'll, he'll, he can open those that he opened and he'll shut doors that no man can. Good God from Mount Zion. He'll fix it. He'll turn it around for you. He'll work it out. He'll make it all good. Uh, tell your neighbor, tell somebody right next to you. Oh, he just shout out. Good God, the fight is God's. It belongs to the Lord. It's not yours. It's not yours. The next thing about the wall that, uh, that must come down is faith. It's a faith fight. Now, first look at the, the walls around Jericho, which suggests there's no way possible that uh, the people could penetrate destruction. Good God, first of all, from the ground level, you will notice two walls, two sets of walls. The first being a retainer type wall. Yeah, clay mortar at the base, about half the way up and huge stone the rest of the way. And, and this goes up about four stories high. Uh, next, there's a wide gap space uh, between the two walls, the retainer and the regular wall. And, there's a gap space enough to build a house between that space. And as you move inward, there's a second wall that is similar to the retainer wall. And it extended up another six stories above that, above the first wall. And we're talking huge stone, a huge stone structure with towers and strong defense posts along the walls. And with the natural eye, one might say it's utterly impossible to overcome these walls around Jericho. But the Bible said, uh, good God, if I uh, might be, oh God, uh, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. But look at verse two, the Lord said to, unto Joshua, in verse two, he said, I have given unto thine hand Jericho. It's king, and it's mighty men of valor. Now, now it took strong faith for Joshua to trust that what God said he would indeed perform. And look at the wording. I, he said, I have given. And God encourages the heart of Joshua. He said, I have given unto thine hand, Jericho. Not I'm going to give it to you. Or one day it will be yours. He said, I have given unto thine hands. Good God from Mount Zion. God says, I have given it to you, uh, not will or not shall, but I have given it to you. And you've, you've got to know that if God said it, and if you have faith enough to believe, God will do it. He will perform it, and he will manifest that thing in your life. Can I get a witness? And, and it took strong faith to walk around Jericho Y'all hear me now. Can I get a witness here? It took some strong faith to walk around this city with a bunch of people with all kinds of personalities and attitudes and all kinds of uh, uh, arrogance and all kinds of different uh, uh, demeanors. Walk around six acres of real estate uh, once for six days and, and seven times on the seventh day. And good God from Mount Zion, the Lord told him at one point, don't say a word. Can, can you imagine that? Good God from Mount Zion, ver verse 10 said they were not to make any noise with their voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of their mouth until the appointed time. Can, can you see a bunch of us walking around this place, six acres plus, and not being able to say a word? Can, can you see all of Israel more than half a million people walking around the outskirts of this retainer wall of Jericho and what they uh, may have been thinking, and especially if some of us, mm, good God, <laughs> Lord, have mercy, Holy Ghost, help me, Holy Ghost. No doubt some of us, you know, were out there walking too. Uh, yeah, some, 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 some might have said, I'm tired and my feet hurt. Y'all know I'm right about it. They're, 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 and they're, they're doing this on the basis of God saying the, this wall, this great wall is going to fall. I can see some of us out there talking about my back hurt. And some talking about I'm too old for this mess. I think I'm going to just sit down here for a while. No doubt some said we should 
We should have stayed in Egypt. I, I, out here in this heat and all this dust, just walking around this city. And, and yeah, I, I know how people think. It, 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 it's hot out here and, and I need a break. And, and, and the Lord told me I don't talk and I, I, I'm irritated and I'm sweating. And good God, so some may, may even sat down for a while and say, y'all go ahead on. I'll catch on up with you. A little bit later, I, I can see some negative person saying these walls ain't coming down. Y'all just wasting your time. But the devil is alive. You've got to have faith on this journey. Yeah, you've got to trust, believe, and obey the word of the Lord. Joshua started gathering the leaders and giving instructions and preparing the people for what God had told them to do. And if your walls are going to come down, you're going to need some strong faith. Don't look at the size of the wall, but look at he who created the wall. Look at he who made the wall. Good God from Mount I See, the Bible says everything was made by him, and without him was not anything made that was, even the walls in your life. But faith can bring them down if you trust and believe that God is able. Have faith in the Lord. The Bible says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. And you've got to know that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Yeah, faith is calling those things that be not as though they were. Faith, faith, you've got to talk it. Yeah, power in the life and death is in the power of the tongue. And it don't take much. Bible says faith the size of a mustard seed can make huge trees be plucked up and cast down. It can make mountains to be removed. Good God, look look what Jesus said in Matthew 21. If you have the faith and, and, and doubt not, you can say unto the mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and it shall be done. Faith is powerful and the church is lacking in faith. Faith, faith can move mountains. I know I'm right about it. Faith can cure diseases. Faith can open blinded eyes and unstop deaf ears. Faith can make lame men to walk and dumb men to talk. Faith can make demons to flee and good God, devils to shake and quake. Faith saves souls. It opens doors that, that no man and it shut doors that no man can do. Faith, faith, faith. We've got to have faith, faith. Faith. Somebody ought to tell your neighbor right beside you. You've got to have faith, baby. Third and final thing in this, this fight uh, requires some noise. Good God from Mount Zion. It's not your fight. Good God. It's a faith fight. But then it requires noise. It's a loud fight. Verse 15 and 16 says on the seventh day, they, would, they went around Jericho. Seven times. Y'all see it in the word. It's in the word. As the Lord had instructed. Said they walked around seven times. And on the seventh time, when the, the priests blew the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, shout. Now, uh, to shout is not to whisper. To whisper wouldn't nullify the meaning of the word shout. To shout is to let somebody immediately next to you, and even those at a distance, hear the sound from your mouth. Verse 20 says, the people shouted with a great shout, and the wall fell down flat. So so that, the, I, and you know, it's, it's ironic I would bring that point up because I remember being in a church not long ago, well, a few years back, and this church was somewhat reserved. It was an evening service, and they had this dy dynamite, this awesome preacher from North Carolina as a guest preacher. I'd never heard it, heard him before, but I heard that he was an awesome preacher. So I went to that church, to that revival meeting that night. And uh, as the preacher got fervent in his preaching, I looked around the room, and I noticed there was nobody saying amen, nobody saying Hallelujah. You could hear a pin drop on a carpet floor. And this man was preaching his heart out. And I don't know about you, but I know that that's not what God means by shouting to be quiet and to try to be all dignified. No, 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 no. There's a time and a season for everything. But when God tells you to shout, 
when you hear somebody preaching about Jesus and telling about the Lord, it's all right. To, and I messed around in that church and stood up and I started saying amen and hallelujah and started getting happy in Jesus. And I look around and I noticed folk were looking. They were looking hard at me because I was saying amen. I believe I must have was the only one next to the pastor of the church who was giving this man amens and hallelujah. But God wants us to make a joyful noise. And this battle in the text is a loud fight. The people shouted with a great shout and the wall, the Bible says, fell down flat so that the people went in the city and they took the city, they took over the city. So then how was it I asked myself that noise and shouting and blowing of trumpets would make this huge wall fort to fall down. I scratched my head and I began to ask myself the question, how could uh, some noise and the blowing of trumpets uh, 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 cause this big wall or these walls to fall? Well, I got to studying a little bit and I discovered an unknown engineer wrote an article some years back. He said, comparing to a wine glass shattering from a specific frequency. He wrote harmonic vibrations combined with static equilibrium and natural resonance would create fail. Th this is the scientific law of vibrations and resonance, which is increasing amplitude. But, but Joshua didn't know this science. He didn't know anything about this science and neither did anyone during Joshua's time. Man, man did not discover this science until 1850, April of that year. Joshua did not know anything about any kind of uh, law of vibrations, but God did. <laughs> and there, there are things that you don't know, but the omniscient and all-knowing God knows everything. And, and, and all we've got to do is trust and believe in the ancient of days and the great I am. So the science suggested that marching in cadence of, of the men created a natural resonance, a huge vibration in the earth that, that matched the frequency of the walls around Jericho and the walls were able to absorb the enemy, the energy each day for six days. But the seventh day, the increasing of the vibrations and the amplitude of the marching, along with the added increase of the sound waves and vibrations for, from, from the blowing of the trumpet, it tipped the balance of what the walls could withstand. And according to the science, that wall had no other choice but to crumble and fall flat. But but it was the shout and the noise that caused the victory. We, we have engineers down here on earth, but, but their knowledge and their science is utterly limited. But, but if we obey good God and trust the chief engineer, who is the Lord God, our father, who lives up in glory land, if we obey the chief engineer, when he said, make a joyful noise, all ye people, good God, when he said, let everything that had breath Praise the Lord. Make some noise and lift up your holy hands and shout and dance to the glory of the Lord. But the fight requires, good God from Mount Zion, it requires some noise. David said on one occasion, I will bless the Lord. I will bless him at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Good God, I will bless him. Good God, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad oh magnify the lord with me let us exalt his name together and the old church used to say simply put when praises go up uh, blessings come down when the shout went out and when the shout went up into the atmosphere the walls had to come tumbling down and I stop by to say you ought to give God some praise. You ought to make some noise. First of all, good God, know whose fight it is. Second thing is it's a faith fight. And then we've got to know that it's a 
loud fight. We've got to shout until heaven answers our prayers. We've got to shout until demons begin to tremble. We've got to shout until mountains begin to be removed. We've got to shout till COVID-19 moves its way, its ugly head out of our way. We've got to shout until the fever breaks. Shout until our mortgage is paid. Shout until we get that promotion. Shout until your pay grade is increased. Holler and shout. Shout and holler. We've got to holler till your marriage is resolved. Shout until your children is saved. We've got to shout. Shout until your husband act right. We've got to shout. Good God from Mount Zion. We've got to shout until your wife stop nagging. We've got to shout until good God, you hear clearly from glory. Holler till God see you clearly. Holler till the Lord shows up. Holler till good God, a fire fall from glory. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. He is all right with me. I'm going to call on his name because he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to make a joyful noise because these walls that are in my life have got to come down. These walls that's in my world, they've got to come down. I've got some walls that I need you working on. I realize that sometimes all I've got to do is shout and talk to the Lord. I don't know, I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that I found King Jesus not too long ago. He lifted me up when I was down. Place my feet on holy ground, turn my life completely around, and I've seen the lightning flash, I've heard the thunder roll, I've felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul, but I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me, good God, the Lord, I heard the voice of Jesus said, come unto me and rest, lay down that weary one that hid upon my breast. I came to him just as I was, weary, worn, and sad. In him I found a resting place, and he has made, he made me glad. Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? I'm going to shout until my situation becomes better. I'm going to shout until I get my new home. I'm going to shout until that wall come down. I'm going to shout until the Lord take me up higher. I'm going to shout till I get my breakthrough. I'm going to shout in the morning time. I'm going to shout in the noonday. I'm going to shout in the evening hour, late in the midnight hour, I'm going to have a little talk with Jesus, I'm going to tell him all about my troubles, I know he'll hear my things to cry, he'll answer by and by, he's a mighty good God, he's good in the morning, he's a mighty good God, ain't God all right, ain't God all right, ain't God all right, ain't God all right, He's a mighty good God. He's a healer in the midst of your sickness. He's a doctor in your hospital. He's a lawyer in your courtroom. My God is an awesome God. Hey! He's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. And I don't know about you. But he's utterly been good to me. He's been better to me. And I've been to myself. And I really don't know about you, but God. 
has been good to me. From the rocking of my cradle up into this present time, he's been good. Here comes my brothers and sisters, another opportunity. We thank the Lord for allowing us to talk about these walls and that they simply must come down. These walls in your life. There are some things that's hindering you from your next level in the kingdom. And I stopped by to say here's three points to help you iron out the differences. Know whose fight it is. It's the Lord's fight. Understand that it takes faith in this fight. And also, as an added bonus, if you were to shout and quit trying to be so pritzy and, and wearing up your cute suit and trying to be all pritzy and cutesy, and brothers and sisters, just shout to the glory of God and give him praise. You can overcome some things by merely shouting, by lifting up the name of the Lord and praising him. Oh, I know you prayed, and the prayer is utterly important as well. But after you prayed a while, you ought to begin to shout. And don't be so concerned about how they look at you. They're going to look at you whether you do good or whether you do bad. If people don't have a heaven or a hell to put you. Shout anyhow. Shout like David. You remember David shouted. His wife thought it was something unbecoming of the king to be shouting like that in the commoner's presence. But David did not care. He knew that God was good that the ark was back home, but shout anyhow. They, they, they don't have to know what you're shouting for, but you know, you know the victory you're trying to get. You know that the level you're trying to go may just be one shout away from the breakthrough. God told me to tell you those walls, they got to come down. And God also told you through the preacher how to go about doing it. So if you're not saved, that's first and foremost. If you're not saved, we invite you to come to Jesus. We invite you to pray and ask God. Let him know that you're sick and tired of being in, in an unsaved status. All the trials and troubles and tribulations, they won't stop, but the Lord will cleanse your soul and he'll prepare you for that home in glory where he says, in my father's house are many mansions. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And if you're not saved, Romans 10 and 9 said, But if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Come to Jesus as the doors of the church in a virtual sense are open. All you've got to do is fall down on your knees and ask the Lord to be your Savior, to be your Lord and Savior. When you look down, your feet will be the same. When you look at your hands, they'll be the same. If you had a corn on your toe, it'll still be there. But your soul, soul will be saved. When Jesus come back for the rapture, he'll see the blood over your life and call you on up. Because one of these days he's coming back. So that anyone can think. So if you not saved, come to Jesus. Give your life to the Lord. All right, brothers and sisters, this concludes today our word message and our service. We want to continue to we want to ask you to continue to pray and be about the business of the Lord. Continue to do your social distancing and, and uh, washing of your hands. That's stressed. Uh, washing of your hands and your social distancing and the face coverings, masks. Uh, 
uh, sanitizing of your your areas, your work areas, your home areas, doorknobs, and things like that. We want to we want to eliminate the curb, flatten, slash, and eliminate. So continue to be safe. We want everybody to come back. Uh, we're so glad that Deaconess Ralph is back with us, and I see that she did comment on the on the uh, social media there. So we just ask that you continue, continue doing what you're doing the lord will bless you now it's time to go home it's time to go well to the next room or it's time to bid you farewell <laughs> uh, it's, this has been a it still is a blast being able to uh, reach out and minister through this virtual environment it is it's somewhat different but nonetheless we're still able to be in uh, each other's company and fellowship by way of having virtual services. Now may the grace of God, the love, fellowship, and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forth and forevermore. The people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. God bless you, church. And you do remember that God indeed loves you. Till we meet again, you have your stuff with you.